In this video, we're going to learn how to solve for the equilibrium partial pressures using an ice chart. However, instead of using the quadratic equation, we will see that there is an easier way to solve this kind of problem. Keep a lookout for perfect squares. So we're going to have an equilibrium, and that is iodine gas is going to react with some chlorine gas and is going to form this mixed halogen compound here, this iodine monochloride ICl. And we're given the equilibrium constant in terms of partial pressures is 81.9, that's at room temperature. And we're going to start off with some initial partial pressures. So if uh, we start out with a partial pressure of everything, of the iodine, of the chlorine, and of the ICL, the iodine monochloride, if it all starts out at 0.1 atmospheres, um, and that's the initial pressure, what would the final partial pressures be? So we can set this up using an ice chart. So I love ice charts, um, so a little bit of fun. And actually, if you want to, you can go ahead and pause it, and you can go ahead and try and do it yourself. But uh, this is a little bit tricky, So, um, but if you're feeling brave, you can. Now, in an ice chart, we can use concentrations, we can use moles, or we can use partial pressures. So I'm going to use partial pressures. And I'm going to be very sloppy and just write everything as 0.1. Now, on the change line, we don't know what direction the change is going to be. So we need to calculate the reaction quotient. The reaction quotient, we just use the actual concentrations of everything. Or actually, we're measuring QP. We use the actual pressures of everything. So there's two ICL, so we square that one. There is one iodine, and there's one chlorine. So we don't have to square any of those. Everything is 0.1, so essentially it's 0.1 squared over 0.1 times by 0.1. We can see that's just equal to 1. And uh, how does that compare? That is much smaller than Kp. So it means that Qp's got to get bigger. And Qp's got to get bigger. That means that the concentration of ICL or the pressure of ICL has got to go up. And the pressure of iodine and of chlorine has to go down. So in terms of the equilibrium, if we're making more ICL, that means that we are going from left to right. So our change then, we're going to be using up from the left. And we're going to be going to the right. And do you see my mistake? Yeah, I got the direction of change, Greg. But remember, I'm making two ICLs. So I have to put a 2 in front of my X there. Because whatever I2 goes down by, ICL goes up by twice that value. At equilibrium, I can just add together the top and the middle line. So 0.1 minus X for each of those. And at the bottom here, this is 0.1 plus 2X. So at this point here, we can calculate the equilibrium constant. So Kp, pressure of ICL at equilibrium squared over the pressure of iodine times the pressure of chlorine at equilibrium. We're told in the problem this is 81.9. And we've calculated the equilibrium pressures, at least involving x's. Right? So that would be 0.1 plus 2x. And at the bottom, it would be 0.1 minus x and 0.1 minus x. Do you see my mistake? Yep, there's two ICLs. So i got to remember to square that. Now you might be saying, oh no, this is a quadratic equation, so we need to expand out. We'll get powers of x, right, that go to the second power. It's a quadratic, but actually it is a perfect square. And if it's a perfect square, that means that instead of using, using the quadratic equation, we can just square root both sides. And that is way, way, way easier. So if we just move the viewpoint down a little bit here, we can get a little more room. Okay, awesome. So when I'm using my perfect square, I can square root each side. Now I've got to square root each side, right, left and right. Otherwise, it is not going to give me uh, an equal sign still. So uh, the square root of 81.9 is something like 9.0499, right? That's probably a few more sig figs than I have. Uh, but the right-hand side is equal to uh, 0.1 plus 2x divided by 0.1 minus x. So notice the top was essentially the same thing squared, and the bottom is essentially the same thing times the same thing, right? So when we square root it, essentially we got 0.1 plus 2x squared over 0.1 minus x all squared, so we can just lop off the two squareds. At this point here, we gotta do a little bit of work so we can kind of cross multiply and uh, rearrange, so we get 9.0499 times by 0.1 minus x, is equal to 0.1 plus 2x. And with a little bit of rearranging, right, and I'll leave the math for you, maybe you can pause the video here and see if you get the same answer, I get x to be 0.07285. That's probably uh, one more significant figure than we need. Now, what do we want? We want the equilibrium pressures of everything, so the pressure of iodine and the pressure of chlorine. Uh, those were just 0.1. 
1 minus x, and now I know the value of x, I can just subtract uh, 0.07285 away from 0.1, that gives me 0 0.0272 atmospheres. Again, I think I'm only given these to three decimal places, so that last two is a guard digit. And uh, so that's at equilibrium, by the way. And the partial pressure of ICL, okay, that was 0.1 plus 2x. Again, if I plug in those values, I plug in, what's plug mean? Plug in those values, I get something like 0 0.2456. Five, seven, and again to three decimal places, 0.246, I guess. And those are pressures, so atmosphere. So at equilibrium, that's what we've got. So that was much easier than using the quadratic equation. So we should thank our lucky stars. All right, on to something else.